Welcome, everyone. This is Polly Peebles, and you're listening to Lotro Players News, where we take a look at Lazus and Lotro and here at Lotro Players. And this week we have with us Sandswinda. Hello. Hello there, Sands. Hey, Pine you... Leaf. Light crew this week. Yeah, light crew. Now, the question is are we going to have light news or heavy news? So it looks like relatively light news because, first off, we do have a patch, which is. Very so definitely, these release notes look small. Yes, very definitely a light patch. This is update 33.2.2, which was released on Wednesday, October 12, 2022. It looks like they were thinking, we need to do a maintenance right now in order to get ready for stuff. So we might as well do this little patch for Reddit. That's what it felt like to me. Either that, or they had a number of tweaks to make for the festival. And they needed to get them in. And, of course, festival changes don't get into the patch notes. So they figured they, maybe they found a couple of bugs with the festival. They had to get them in. And they did this along with the ride. That's a possibility. In here it says the gameplay fix is instance bosses with the unyielding effect have been taught once again to correctly shrug off incoming healing debuffs from players. I bet the bosses will be happy about that. I'm sure the bosses will be happy about that. That's the thing is, I don't know how important... I don't know how many instance bosses have the unyielding effect, so I don't know whether this was something that was very important because it was making some instances way too easy, or if this was something, as I said, that maybe it could have waited, but they had to do something for the festival, or... They really need to do a long maintenance. They might as well do the patch. I'm not too sure which is the case. Yeah, I don't know either. And we also have in here that Shadow Facts will advance to level cap 115 on Wednesday, November 2nd, 2022, opening up access to Mordor, Northern Mirkwood, and Strongholds of the North content. The legendary item maximum level will be increased to 345 at this time. Speak with any Forge Master to increase the item level of your item. And of course, that is Shadow Facts that is for reaching level 115. So they go up every two months? Is that right? Seems like it, yeah. Alright. So that means because that means they're hitting 15 now, that means they'll be hitting 120 in January. That means in March will be 130, and I Yes. May will be when they hit into 140. So I guess we'll find out then what happens to Chat Effects type legendary worlds when they hit level cap. Because there is one significant difference between Chat Effects and the regular worlds, and that is the special rule set about landscape difficulty. That's true. That'll be interesting. So it's possible they may open up transfers between Shadow Facts and the regular world, but keep Shadow Facts simply because there will probably be some people who want to still be able to have landscape difficulty around. Because I know some people were asking the question is, are they ever going to be bringing landscape difficulty onto the main servers? And the decision might just be, well, we'll just make Shadow Facts a permanent server so that people can do it over there. I don't know how popular yeah, it'll be it interesting, is. it interesting because they were kind of trying it out to see if they wanted it on the live, the regular servers, weren't they? Yeah, maybe. I know some people like seem to really like it. I just didn't. I just didn't like the way it was implemented, that's all, because Fair. I just found all those explosions and stuff like that just too A much little bit pain. too much. A little bit too much, yeah. It's so, kind of funny sometimes, but yeah. And I didn't know, what happens if some members of the group have it on and some don't? What happens to all those explosions? 
you know, it seems like they're actually concentrated at your player. So probably the players who have it on still get the explosions and the other players just try to stay out of the way. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah, so yeah, I We might have to test this pain life. Right. I guess we are going to have to at some point. We, we've got a few months. we got about six months left then or something like that. True, but it can be tested on Treebeard too, if necessary. You got a point there. It can be tr- tested on Treebeard because they are going at a much lower. But of course, as I said, that when that happens, that maybe they'll have transfers open up to and from there. And that's assuming they get another issue fixed, because apparently world transfers are currently unavailable, but we expect to be returned them in the near future. We will let you know when transfers are once again available, and I will hope that they're available again soon, because we probably have some people who will be wanting to transfer out of Honor before the deadline, because they might still be deciding which servers they will wish to transfer their characters haven't actually done it yet it'd be nice that they have an opportunity to do so for sure that was my first thought too i was like i'm glad i just picked a random server instead of thinking more about that (laughs) yes also thanks so gains is once again participating in extra life Yes, Stainstone Games players from throughout the Lotro community and associated friends and family are raising money for Extra Life. The fundraising through Team Stainstone Games will help the local Boston Children's Hospital provide life-saving treatment and care to children from all over the world. And they give details about they're right now looking to raise $20,000 for Boston Children's Hospital this year. And Team Tango Games includes both Dungeons and Dragons Online and the Lords of the Rings Online players, developers, and friends. Last year, they were the top fundraiser for the Boston Children's Hospital, and they would love to do it again. So then they asked about how you can help, how you can donate, and incentives for that if you donate. And there are individual incentives such as $5 can get you a form title of your choice within the community guidelines and you can PM court event with your desired choice. If you already have a custom title, they can add another. $10 is one pick from the community loot list entry to every giveaway. Two, at $20, two additional picks from the community loot list. At $30, two more additional picks from the community loot list and then at $50 four additional picks from the community loot list in addition to an anniversary celebration pet. All incentives are cumulative so if you donate $50 you'll get the benefits of all the lower tiers. $50 donation will get you nine total picks from the community list and these will be distributed to you through codes that are entered through the redeem code Lotro store page. And then he gives the mini loot list, which includes a large number of in-game titles, such as the well-met, viewer of events, striving to victory, spectator, spectator of words, speaker for the musicians, provider of event information, performer of note, musician suffix, musician prefix, hero of the small folk, event winner, event organizer, concert attendee, attendant, audience member, art lover, artist prefix, and artist suffix. And we also have a couple of housing items. The best house in the neighborhood trophy. So I think that unless you have the best house in, in the neighborhood, it's probably not a good one to get unless I mean, you could use it ironically, too. You do have a point there. It's if you have the worst house in the neighborhood, you might be able to get away with using it ironically. And you could also get a sleeping gray cat. And as for pets, 
anniversary celebration quirky, the lively slug, the tundra cub, and the spirit bear. And there are also musical instruments, the bardic fiddle, the lonely mountain fiddle, the sprightly fiddle, and the traveler's trusty fiddle, and the mouse the the Cremelo steed, the Perlino steed, the steed of the Red Dawn, and the, right, the White City. And thank you for your donation. And that's the community list that's in there. So if you're looking for some of those things and are interested in helping the Boston Children's Hospital, then hit our domain as your outlet through there. Now, note, of course, is that there are other teams all throughout the gaming community that will also be given extra life. So if you have another hospital you'd rather be giving to, you might be looking for a more more to your location. And that's it on extra life. And that, of course, as I said, it is just starting now. It's glad if he gave his gaming date yet. Say mentioned that oh actually oh there will be ah there will be gear giveaways that will be on november 30th that's a note and that is of course the annual campaign for extra life so let's head to our site oh oh, oh no 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 before you head into our site news we've got store sales sans what's on sale this week well <clears throat> this week you can go there and back again. Get 20% off Milestone Skills, Hurried Traveler and Returning Traveler, Advanced Writing Traits, and Rally Horns through October 20th. And the weekly coupon will get you a free Landscape Soldier token. Coupon code, coupon code Skirm Soldier. S-K-I-R-M-S-O-L-D-I-E-R. And that will also work through October 20th. Now, I suggest that you use this on a low to medium level character because I think a landscape soldier would be pretty much useless for a capped character. Because I would say that after about level 100, the efficacy of your skirmish soldiers tends to diminish. Uh, pretty significantly immediately. Uh, yes. But... You know, if you've got a whole group of you who want to, you can run around on landscape with your skirmish soldiers healing each other, which is kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> they won't help you, but they do interact with each other a little bit, which is kind of fun. Uh, Not useful, well, just just funny. Well, they, they could be useful as tanks, I guess. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I haven't tried any of the tanking sort. Well, I don't. No, I'm not talking about the tanking sphere. I'm talking about the herbalists. Oh uh, well, yeah, they have to stay alive long enough too. But well, okay, okay, okay. They won't be able to tank bosses or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, you do have a point on that matter. Looks like though that their ability to stay alive is a little bit better than their ability to do anything else. That's true. That is true. That seems to be one of the few things that they are capable of doing. And as long as you're still focused on killing the mobs, they might stay alive for quite a while. Yes. <laughs> now, I notice, of course, that you're talking about the milestone skills and all that stuff. I'm wondering if I should get some of that stuff. You know, I think I have a new <laughs> Hobbit lore master who needs these things. Yeah, so... I was thinking about the same thing. Um, and maybe a Hobbit champion, too. Because I I am currently playing a hunter, today, but I think the hunter needs these skills a little bit less than a, than a lore master does. Fair. The hunter's got pretty robust travel skills. Though, every so often, a milestone cooldown does come in handy when you need to get to places that you don't have a fast port to. Okay, okay. And they I'll don't have a stable. You, I'll grant you the milestones. Especially this week, since I'm the hunter I'm playing was was the character that I decided to give my 
Valor 105 too because I said, okay, what am I going to do with this Valor 105 set? I decided not to let it sit in my vault forever, so instead I used it on a hunter. And yes, I'm going around pretty fast clip on going to various areas, so I think getting a five minute cooldown milestone was something that was nice. Let's <laughs> just say during the week. Totally. And there's that one place, like if you work your way through Mordor, that is um over by Kirith Ungle, where like it's a pain to get back to, especially with all the spiders, but there's a um a milestone right there. Oh. Right by those you know, stairs. You know how I decided to handle Mordor? Hmm. Oh, I it? decided Yeah, I decided, oh, this is a great level range in which to work on the missions and take care of those. Hey, you know, that sounds even better than spiders. (laughs) It's definitely better than spiders, yes. Okay, there's not much contest there. Yeah. (laughs) It's definitely not. Oh, of course, since that meant I... Of course, that did mean I did have to do a couple of spider-related missions to take all of the missions. Well, fair. But I think that's better than a week in Flingris. Exactly what I was thinking. Yes. Now, on to the site news where Squirrel talks about turning gameplay into numbers. This is an article that he wrote a while back and that he decided this was supposed to be an unpublished part five of his beginner's introduction to stats, Motro. He decided not to publish it at the time, but now since he's going through his backlog and saying, you know, I should go and just send out the draft, the last draft I have of each of these. Talked about a couple of these in the last couple of weeks. So this time he's talked about various numbers in the game and what they mean. trying to say what all these weird numbers all throughout the game and talk about level differences and all that stuff. So anyway, turning gameplay to numbers. And that means it is time for our week in gaming. Sans, what were you up to? Well, I had a very slow week because I had a nasty cold. Ow. So in between naps, I started a new Stardew Valley farm and did a little bit of farming. And then as I was feeling better, I was playing some Ark with Cinders. And we managed to trap and tame two dire bears and started some honey harvesting. Which let us tame some Akatinas, which are snails that produce cementing paste equivalent <laughs> um, constantly. And we need so much cementing paste, especially for her greenhouse. So we tamed very well. And they only eat sweet vegetable cake, which requires the honey, which required the dire bears. So uh, we very uh, boldly tamed six Akatina, who only eat these hard-to-make vegetable cakes uh, today. And then when you set them to wander to make cementing paste, I didn't realize that the Akatina can have baby Akatina. And setting them to wander set them to start making babies. And so we had six adult Akatina, and now we have six baby Akatina that we're trying to raise. Oops. Um, I think we fixed the oh. issue. There shouldn't be any more... Surprise, well, okay. maybe I could Well, that, but all right, that's a rather strange way. So when you said boldly, yeah, we decided like them. I think we can tame six Akatina and keep them fed with these sweet <coughs> veggie cakes, and now we have twelve. Yes, yeah. because they each had a baby. <laughs> it was oh. kind of funny because I thought that I had managed to change their setting. Um with enough time to not have the baby snails uh, because it had like a gestation period countdown and it went away when I changed the setting. And so I was like, yes, I did it. 
And no, no, I didn't. Um, we got some little cute baby <coughs> Akatina. So it's going to take a lot more honey harvesting and feeding them. I'm but. just trying to think is why did they decide that Ark needed Akatina? You know, maybe they took pity on those of us who need too much cementing paste. I really don't know. Um, <laughs> but each one will possibly produce 100 cementing paste in their inventory. Which will be helpful. So. And then, okay. like, if you empty their inventory, they'll produce more. So. Now... Now, is this a, a currently leaving, living species, or is this a species of uh, some supersized, long, extinct species? Uh, well, okay. they're larger than I would expect to be living today, but considering that I think the whole thing is a simulation, um, probably like based on an extinct species would be my guess. I guess. But I don't know for sure. You could check All the right. wiki, I guess. But that was pretty much my week. How was your oh, week, Pine? Okay. okay. It, it looks like the, some of the largest living desserts are like seven. <laughs> for free? So. Okay. How my week went. All right. I'll begin with. <laughs> My legible hunter. Right now I talked about being 105 and trying to level up without doing more. Or any is pretty much how what I've been doing on there. So now I've reached level 111, and I manage a huge number of missions over time. And of course, I've also been running skirmishes. And part of that, then of course, was going back to unlock the skirmishes. Mirkwood and Moria. I actually have all of those all nice and set up. I have one more skirmish to unlock, and that, of course, is Rescue at Nerves Gashu. So I'm all over Area Door trying to collect the so that ready on. Yes, and I'm doing this. Well, partly, of course, so I would have all the skirmishes unlocked, but that means that when I get up to High enough level so that I could be able to use the character Friday Night Fights. I won't be able to. I it sort of be embarrassing for Pine Leaf to go into a group area and I can't remember skirmish. available, <laughs> right? And therefore, right. So I went around getting locked and all that stuff. For my guardian. I headed into the Barrow Downs. Nice. Did you find any cheese? No, I did not find cheese. I was just on the surface so far. I went to the Barrel Downs where doing things like helping Lolly and all that stuff. And Good. She needs some help. She keeps getting herself stuck out there. Yeah, I noticed, doesn't she? Maybe she should open up a shop or something. Right? It might keep her a little bit safer. It might keep her safer, yes. And for Friday Night Fights, my lore master headed headed to the stairs. So we did the stairs, then we stormed Mythedras, then we defended the Prancing Pony, and then we delved into the Great Barrow. Had quite a night there. And that includes my week in gaming. So let's then have out and see what Darren Master was up to. Apparently he has a new tribute song, and this week it is The King of the Dead, and that is to the tune of the song Everything But the Girls Missing. So this is, so that is his uh, latest little tribute token about the King of the Dead. We currently have 16 supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to join us, then you could send a donation to 
Donate your page for the Players Alliance on Patreon. Your money will be used for podcast hosting, website hosting, and to pay for our live shows. If you'd like to send us an email, you can send it to podcast at lochoplayers.com and you can also follow us on Twitter, the Players Alliance at Players Alliance, Locho Players at Locho Players, since when the S sends when the my leaf at Needle. The Players Alliance has two shows on Saturdays at 8.30 p.m. UAC time. We have Locho Players News and we record DDO Players News when Drac is available. You can choose for our shows at lochoplayers.com slash live. And that's all for tonight. Then this is Pony Needles reminding you to skirmish responsibly.